Welcome back to the workshop, everybody. So glad you could be with me here today. Today's topic is the side bead molding plane. And this one here is from Matt Bickford, MS Bickford, molding planes. And uh, it's made of beech. And it has persimmon for what's called the boxing. And the reason why they call that the boxing is that used to be made of boxwood. But persimmons is a good hardwood and that's what Matt uses. So, what is the bead, side bead, and what is it used for? Well, the side bead right here is one I cut, practiced one. Actually, I did a few of them. Uh, the side bead adds a decorative element for either uh, a table apron, a drawer, maybe a, a, a edging around a drawer. It could be used on moldings for trim, for round windows and doors, etc. So, how do we use the plane? Well, it's not much different than any other plane, except it is a fitted molding plane. Now, when you put the blade or what we call the iron in you kind of put your finger here so that the blade does not extend past the bottom edge of the boxing and then you wedge it now before you tighten it completely you want to press that blade down with your finger make sure it's down on the bottom of the recess so that it's registering properly now you have it wedged but it's not tightened yet so then you look down the plane just like you do with any other plane you sight down it and check your exposure now these blades are tapered they go from thin to thick so every time you tap it forward you have to tap the wedge to seat it so remember that tap 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 and you keep doing that until you see some exposure. Now, you don't want to go too far. I see a little bit of exposure right now, and it might be perfect, it might not, because it's much easier to move the blade forward than retract in this style plane. So, when you're picking stock out you want to make sure your grain is going not only in this direction but you want to make sure it's kind of going oh it's behaving in both directions and I think this edge will will work just fine because these will will tear out some if you're cutting too heavy how we start it is there is a there are two registering marks on the plane. One is this outside edge, is your fence, and this edge here is your stop. So this plane does only one thing, it makes beads, and if you push it in properly, you'll be registering against the edge, and then as you go down, once it hits this face, it's done. Usually, you break your wood up into three sections, and you start on the first third. You're pushing in with this hand in this direction. You're pushing down lightly, and then you take a pass, and you get a shaving. If it's light, that's okay. It's better In the beginning, it's going to be extremely light. Now you come back to the second third, and you take a pass. You come back to the end, push in, and you take a pass. And it's going to be a little fuzzy for a while until you get going. If you want, you can you can advance it slightly 
and take a deeper cut. See, it's a heavier cut. But if you take too heavy of a cut, and let's say the wood doesn't like to play well with others, it will tear out. But this seems to be doing okay. Now, normally, I would work on something called a sticking board dedicated to this project. But currently, I have not yet made the sticking board for this project. And you see that the shaving gets bigger and bigger. You got to clear the throat each time. Make sure it stays clear. Now here's here's something. As you're starting to fulfill the bead, you have to look and see how it's cutting. You have to inspect it. If you think, see, I'm getting a little fuzzy there. If you think you want to make a thinner cut, you have to almost always back it completely out and start all over, setting it for a fine finished cut. So you would tap the blade forward, see that how it's coming out, which loosens the wedge. And then you start all over. Clear any shavings. Finger on the blade, lightly set the wedge, press it down, check your exposure, see if you got a cut. It's always easier to add, see I'm not really getting anything, it's easier to add exposure than to remove. And if you take a fine enough shaving, it'll reduce the chance of any tear out. Little fuzzies. It's a very gentle tool. It's not a, it's not, you don't have to be a bulldog with it. You can go faster if you have your wood clamped into a sticking board, you can go faster. And some people will, in fact, pull it back while it's still in the groove. I don't see how that's a help, but to each their own, I suppose. So we're just about there. As long as I'm getting a shaving, I'm not done. But I'm getting a real fine shaving now. So this will be as smooth as I can make it. Poplars are good wood to work for making moldings. But picking the wood out, <laughs> that's a trick. All right, I think we're just about there. Let's take a closer look. And sometimes you can take your shavings and just rub it on there get some of the fuzzies off and there you go what do you think look okay so that would be on the apron of a table or a rail of a door so that's basically it now this is a quarter inch dimension side bead and I've got a couple big tables to make and I'm debating, still debating if that's enough of a bead. I'd like to go maybe to 5 sixteenths. I don't think I need to go all the way up to 3 eighths, but we'll see. So. Care and use of these planes is real simple. When you're done with your project, you loosen the blade. 
And uh, to those of you who are used to calling them irons, I'm sorry. I, I tend to call them, call them blades. You blow out any dust. You uh, make sure that there's no shavings in there. You put your blade in. Once again, make sure your finger's there so the blade is above the boxing. And then you just take your wedge, you put it in, and just lightly, that's it, just so it can't fall out. Don't hit it with a hammer, don't tighten it, just leave it loose like that. And I wrap this one up and put it away because it's a special one. Um, but there you go. That's basically it. Beating plane. If you have any questions, leave them down in the comment section. And if you have any other ideas for videos and whatnot, let me know. We'll see what 2018 brings, but I'm going to keep plugging away at this and see if we can't grow this channel. And uh, if you found something useful, helpful, maybe just entertaining, give it the old thumbs up and don't forget to subscribe. In the meanwhile, head out to your shop. Go make some shavings. Walter out.